In today's video, I'm going to give you 10 of my top picks for the best 125cc scooters you can buy in 2023. But just before I begin, make sure to let me know your favorite 125cc scooter in the comments section below. Now, a very quick disclaimer here. In this video, I'm really concentrating on 125cc commuter scooters. So you won't see maxi scooters on this list and you won't see electric scooters either. But don't worry, if you're into that kind of content, I'll be doing videos on those very soon. Starting off my list at number 10, is a Chinese budget offering from Sinus is the Hero X. With a modern sporty design, the Hero X is like a good few else on this list, a deliberate budget competitor to the likes of the NMAX and PCX. With a liquid cooled 124cc single cylinder engine, the Hero X puts out a decent 11 horsepower, so it won't be up there with the big boys, but it does do okay. Throw in a digital display, comfy seat, typical underseat storage and LED lighting, with a price tag of just £2,899 plus on the road, it does make the Hero X a nice option for those on a tight budget. Let's move on to the cons of the Hero X, and it's fair to say it's a bit no frills. We're unsure of the longevity and resale value because it is a budget Chinese bike, and at about 146 kilos, it is a bit on the heavy side. So what are the pros of the Hero X? Well, in my opinion, it looks quite good. Second of all, it's got a liquid cooled engine that puts out 11 horsepower, which isn't top of the range by any means, but it is pretty damn respectable. And at 2,899 pounds plus on the road, it is a very budget friendly price. So there you go, my number 10 spot goes to a budget Chinese bike. And at number nine, there is another Chinese bike as well. So what do you think of Chinese budget scooters? Let me know in the comment section below, but don't be worried. If you're not a fan, there's loads of top class premium scooters coming up in this list. Yes, at number nine, we do have another budget friendly Chinese offering. This time it's the Lexmoto Aura. With decent levels of spec from keyless ignition, USB port, LED lighting, the Aura ticks a lot of boxes. And visually, I have to say, I quite like it. Though again, it is clearly taking inspiration from some of the best Japan has to offer. Putting out slightly less horsepower than the Sinus, the Aura produces 9.7 horsepower at 8,000 RPM, and you should expect somewhere in the region of 63 miles an hour as a top speed and just over 80 miles per gallon in fuel economy, all for a budget-friendly price of £2,739.99. So what are the cons on the Lexmoto Aura? Well, first of all, just like the Sinus, we're unsure on longevity and resale value. And second of all, that engine is slightly underpowered and there's plenty in this list which have more poke than this. So what are the pros on the Lexmoto Aura? Well, first of all, I think it looks fantastic. It's a very budget friendly price and the spec you have to say for the price point is pretty decent as well. And coming in at number eight, is the all new for 2023 Suzuki Address 125. I recently covered the new Suzuki scooters in my top 10 new scooters for 2023 video. The event is also back for 2023, but for today I'm giving this spot to the commuter's friend, the Address. The new Euro 5 Suzuki Eco Performance engine might be pretty low on the power front, which is a little bit disappointing in my opinion. However, it should be returning near 150 miles per gallon from a scooter well known for being a great commuter scooter. It's not the best looking scooter in the world, but it is extremely practical and should be pretty darn reliable too. It's definitely no frills, but with a near 22 litre underseat storage and it's very lightweight in nature, weighing just 105 kilograms, it'll be suitable for most. The biggest thing going for the address though is the price. It starts from just 2,499 pounds, so it is cheaper than both the Chinese scooters already mentioned on this list, albeit the address is a bit on the basic side. Onto the cons on the Suzuki Address 125, and in my opinion, it's no thrills and it's slightly underpowered. So what are the pros on the Suzuki Address? Well, I think you know already, it offers fantastic fuel economy. 150 miles per gallon is absolutely fantastic. It's lightweight, it's gonna be a great commuter scooter, and at two and a half grand, this thing is so budget friendly from a well-known brand, I think it will sell in really good numbers. In at number seven now, and we have Sim with their modern day commuter scooter, it's the Jet X. Unmistakably another one of those aimed at the NMAX and PCX, but in all fairness, this really is a great scooter ticking many of the same boxes as the Japanese brands. With full LED lighting, great modern and aggressive styling, LCD screen, keyless ignition, decent switch gear, the Jet X isn't just on this list as a token entry, it really is a great 125cc scooter. 
When it comes to the engine, we have another water cool bad boy, this time kicking out a superb 12 and a half horsepower at 8,000 RPM. This is a decent offering from Sim with a starting price of just 3,349 pounds. It is cheaper than the NMAX and PCX. On to cons now for the Jet X, and in my opinion, it could do with ABS, and I think the underseat storage could be a bit bigger too. On to pros now, and in my opinion, the Jet X looks absolutely fantastic. And second of all, that spec is decent, and it places this so close to the Japanese rivals. In at number six, and admittedly, this one could be at the number one spot and easily in the top five. I think you guys are probably gonna disagree with me, so rain that hate in the comment section below, because number six, is the Honda SH125. Yes, as I've just said, admittedly the SH could easily be in the top five. However, this is one Honda which I actually think is ugly, and as it's my list, it's at number six. The Honda SH125 is a European style slim scooter, perfect for nipping around town with phenomenal levels of practicality and comfort. It doesn't let down on the tech front either with LCD display, smart key, ABS, start stop technology, USB chargeable and selectable torque control. This is a big wheel scooter too, which have their own perks with 16 inch wheels for extra stability. Even better is Honda have their 12.9 horsepower ESP Plus engine in this, meaning it has enough grunt for fast roads too, and should easily get over 60 miles per hour as a top speed. On to cons for the Honda SH125, and personally, there's only one main one for me, and that is the styling. It is Marmite. Not everyone is gonna like this scooter. Pros now for the Honda SH125, and there's a great level of spec to be found here. Also, it's Honda, so it's gonna be reliable and dependable, as well as being extremely practical, and it does have a fantastic engine in this thing. By the way, we have loads more top 10 videos coming your way, and as the Bike Matters Scooter Geek, I'll be giving you my list for the best maxi scooters best electric scooters and best retro scooters very, very soon. But don't worry if you're into motorcycle content because Roger and Felix will have plenty of motorbike videos too. So make sure to be subscribed to the channel for that. Oh, and if you're in the UK and it's time to get your insurance on your scooter or motorcycle, click the link in the top right hand corner now and you can save up to 20 pounds off your insurance premium directly with Lexum who powers here at Bike Matters. Right, let's go on to those final five fantastic 125cc scooters. In at number five, and we have a true Italian legend, one of the most stylish scooters ever designed, it is the Vespa Primavera. Straight away, you know the Primavera is the real deal. Many can try to be retro and cool, but none will ever do it with the authenticity and quality of Vespa. It's stunning, it's a Vespa, so you should know it's going to be a scooter with a fairly premium price tag. Arguably, there's also the Sprint and GTS 125cc options available too, However, it's the Primavera which takes my pick today with over 50 years of heritage. With 12 inch wheels, great colorway options, LED lights and that timeless design, the Primavera is a very unique offering on today's list and starts from 4,250 pounds. What are the cons on the Vespa Primavera? Well, it's a premium scooter, so you expect a premium price tag, so it's not gonna be suitable for everyone's budget. And the engine, in my opinion, could do just a little bit more power for this price point. Pros now, and it is a retro commuter scooter, and there's not many about, especially with a brand heritage such as Vespa. And then you just look at the thing, this scooter looks fantastic. And even better, there's loads of colorway choices too. We're getting closer and closer to that top spot now. And in at number four is a fantastic scooter. It's the Aprilia SR GT125. Admittedly, the top four scooters for me are all incredibly close. I've tested all four and I love all four as well. However, the SR GT125 just misses out on the top three. With incredible adventure scooter styling in Aprilia's unique yet glorious own way, it packs the same powerful yet economical I get 14.7 horsepower motor, which is also found in the Piaggio medley. The SRGT125 is one fantastic scooter which ups the game for modern four-stroke scooters. It has a very mature yet sporty look and great levels of spec including LCD dash, full LED lighting, USB charging port, start-stop technology and traction control. The only downside for me is that the 125 version doesn't have ABS as standard, but that aside, it truly is a fantastic scooter. Starting from 3,700 pounds, it is very competitive. Cons for me on this one, and it could do with ABS. The underseat storage could be a tad bit bigger, just like the medley, and is a bigger, slightly heavier scooter. Pros now, and with great dimensions, a fantastic engine, 
awesome, awesome styling. This really is one of the best 125cc scooters you can buy today. We're into the top three now and taking that third spot is a four stroke scooter legend, the Honda PCX. It will no doubt be controversial having the PCX at number three, as many people out there will see this as number one. If you do think it's number one, let me know in the comment section below. Now there is no doubt the PCX is a truly great scooter and for me the top three, sorry even the top four are so close together that barely anything separates them. With great styling, that brilliant ESP Plus engine, highly competitive levels of spec including the start stop technology, LCD display, torque control, LED lighting and USB charging port, the PCX really is a great scooter that like so many Hondas out there ticks so many boxes. With world famous Honda reliability, the PCX is one of the most dependable modern day scooters ever released. And with a starting price of just £3,599 for an all around great commuter scooter, it's no surprise it sells in such great numbers. Cons now for the Honda PCX, and for me, there's only one which really stands out, and I think the brakes could be just a little bit better. Pros next for the Honda PCX, and for me, great styling, great engine, great technology, it is a great scooter. And taking the number two spot is the Yamaha NMAX 125. Another big hitter from Japan, the NMAX, much like the PCX, is a huge seller and for good reason. With the perfect mix of modern and slightly sporty design, fused with practicality and some pretty tasty colorways too, the NMAX is a very versatile scooter. Yamaha bring their VVA engineering to the engine of the NMAX, meaning it performs very well, not just in the city but out on faster roads too meaning acceleration to 50 miles per hour is very good for a 125cc scooter and you can see highs of over 65 miles per hour. Sporting decent spec again such as LCD display, app connectivity, smart key, start stop technology, traction control and LED lighting. On to the cons for the Yamaha NMAX 125 and for me you really have to nitpick to find anything kind of wrong with this scooter, it is absolutely fantastic. Small bits and like I say I am nitpicking, maybe a little bit more storage space under that seat and maybe a little bit more poke from the engine but that really is just being critical for the sake of it. Pros for the Yamaha MX 125 and it's pretty much all of the above, it is a truly fantastic scooter, it's got a great little engine, the styling is on point, I think it looks brilliant, the tech is decent and all in all it's a brilliant commuter scooter. And we're here people, it's my final spot of today's video and at number one as the best commuter scooter for 2023 is the Piaggio Medley 125. It's probably a massive shock not to have one of the Japanese rivals at the top spot but the Medley really is an absolutely fantastic 125cc scooter. Admittedly that very European slim commuter scooter look won't be for everyone but that really is the only negative of this otherwise truly great 125cc scooter. The big wheel scooter is agile and stable with great dimensions too, with a large and clear LCD display, LED lighting, start stop technology, USB port and optional smartphone connectivity, it's absolutely packed with spec. When it comes to storage the Medi offers a lot, under that seat I could fit two full face helmets easily which puts itself way ahead of most on the list, further still there's a glove box on the rear of the leg shield too. Another standout feature of the Medley is the iGet engine, the same which can be found from the Aprilia SRGT125 which puts out almost 15 horsepower and offers great fuel economy. When test riding the Medley I saw a top speed of 70 miles per hour which for a modern 4 stroke 125cc scooter is fantastic. It's great at darting through town and an awful lot of fun on country lanes too, a lot of people will be surprised just how well this thing rides. Starting from £3,500, the Medley is priced extremely competitively for a bike of this spec and tech. Cons on the Medley, and for me there's only one, and that realistically is just those European slim looks won't be for everyone. So pros for the Piaggio Medley, and as you might guess, being at number one, I think so highly of it, just about everything on this scooter is absolutely fantastic. We've got loads of storage space, decent suspension, brilliant brakes, a phenomenal engine, pretty decent if not almost class leading spec at this range as well. So overall it's a fantastic 125cc scooter and well deserved of taking that number one spot. There you go everyone, that was my top 10 125cc scooters for 2023. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.